Hi and welcome to Rose Red Homestead where today we're going to be focusing on self-reliance and food security in particular and this is relative to this free booklet that several thousand of you have already downloaded. It just tickles me that so many of you have um, liked this enough that you're downloading it and we're already hearing reports back on some of the recipes so that's so gratifying to us we're really glad that we can put something out there that is helpful to people uh, this is a free download up on our bookstore and i will put the link underneath i also want to remind you that our um, class on water bath canning has opened up this week as well and so look for the link if you are interested in checking out that class you can go in and take a look at the first lesson and I think you can even view the first video to see if it's something that might be to your liking when I did the video on this um, two chickens 12 meals for two people one of the things that I promised was since there were not photographs in the little booklet that I would be adding the photographs and we're going to start that process today I also promised that we would be demonstrating these recipes but with a little twist we're going to do them off grid now as I have thought about and prepared the equipment that we are going to use off grid if and when we have to do that long term um, I have not practiced and actually done it as much as I think I should I have done some but I need more practice so I am using this opportunity a little bit self-serving so that I can also practice and get much better at cooking off-grid today we're going to use the rocket stove outside and then I am going to use um, we're going to do two recipes both of the recipes that call for using the chicken broth and um, I did the chicken broth on the very day that I did the video it's been sitting in the refrigerator and it yielded two quarts which is exactly what I wanted it yielded a little bit more than two cups of chicken shreds and so I'm going to show you what we're going to do with that now uh, we're all set up outside so we're going to move outside now <sighs> it is 102 outside in our backyard fortunately we're in the shade and i really thought hard because i have a very difficult time in the heat um, i had a heat stroke uh, when i was collecting cactus data out at white sands national monument when i was doing my second master's degree and it has affected me for the past 30 years since i did it all those years ago since that happened to me all of those years ago but I figure that, you know, if the time comes when we're going to have to cook outside, we're going to have to cook outside regardless of whether it's snowing or 102 degrees. So we're going to be making our chicken, vegetable, and pasta soup outside on the rocket stove. And then we're going to come back in here and with a skillet on the butane stove, which is also off grid, but in my own kitchen. Uh, and then we're going to do the uh, chicken thighs and orzo one pot meal. Um, one of the things to consider when we are doing off-grid cooking is getting ourselves organized so we don't have to make 37 trips back and forth. I'm going to do, when the time, when and if the time comes, that I'm doing almost all off-grid cooking, this kitchen is going to be my base camp. And I will be walking back and forth, um, even though I may not have running water everything else I have here my ingredients my most of my equipment so I'm going to be practicing that as well so I have the last of the things I need to take outside on this tray let's head out there we are out here in the area that we call our off-grid kitchen we don't have everything set up here we don't keep it out here we keep it in the house and then just bring things out as we need it I'm talking about our um, equipment so this is our stainless steel prep table it stays out here all the time and a tablecloth that covers that and i have washed and steramined the tablecloth and so we are set so here i have the ingredients for the soup here is the celery the onions and the carrots here is the pasta and the bay leaf and i'm adding a dehydrated lemon slice which i often do the recipe that is given in the booklet is plain as can be I will always dress it up. I expect that you will too, but the foundational ingredients are in the recipe for you to, as my dad would say, decorate however you want. And so um, I have the chicken right here, and it's a little bit more than a cup. I'm using half of what I took from uh, boiling down the bones. 
and then I will also be adding some Italian seasoning and salt and pepper. So we're going to start. Here is the pot that I'm going to use. So here is a tablespoon of ghee. It has melted. It was not melted when I put it in here. It's melted because it is so hot out here. So I'm going to go ahead and put it right on the rocket stove. Jim has a nice fire going for us. And so once that starts to smoke, then we're ready for the next step, which is to uh, saute the vegetables. So we'll come back when this is ready to work with. All right, we're ready. Here we go. So this is a half a cup each of celery, onions, and carrots. And this, in French, is known as mirepoix. It is the foundation for lots and lots of soups and stews. I use it a lot. And I have freeze-dried and dehydrated versions of these, although I'm short on onions, but I have a batch of onions in the freeze-dryer right now. But these are all fresh. If you're making this from your food storage, you might need to rehydrate these three and then do the little sauteing. Yeah. When the rocket stove is burning the way it should, there should not be a lot of smoke. We are still working on mastering that part of it. Right now it's doing just great. This little cook table that Jim has it set up on is the one that we got for a Dutch oven cooking with the charcoals on it. It has been one of the handiest things that we have. I don't think we got it at Amazon, so it's not in our store. But you know what? I'll look for one like this on Amazon, and um, I'll put it up there just so that if you're interested, you can see it. Um, I don't put anything on our Amazon store that we have not bought and used ourselves. I'm not going to recommend anything or put anything up there that I don't recommend. The, the vegetables are by no means done, but the onions are translucent. We've warmed them up and we've sauteed them just a little bit. So we're going to go forward. So this is one of two quarts of the chicken broth, the bone broth, that resulted from boiling down the bones of those two chickens. So I'm just going to dump it right in. If you have a larger family, you can stretch this soup with more ingredients, of course. I stuck to just the one quart of broth because I wanted that broth to be very um, strong and sturdy. And it turned out really wonderful. I'm going to add a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. That is not in the recipe, but please feel free to jazz it up however you would like. And then some salt, probably a teaspoon. And about a fourth of a teaspoon of pepper. How's the fire doing? Fire's doing fine. We've got some nice coals, Jim. Got a nice breeze too. Yeah, the wind is going, the fan is going that we hear in the background over in the greenhouse. These are all, well, the wind is what we would have to contend with if we're cooking outside. If we're without electricity, we won't have that fan. All right, we're going to let this simmer for about 20 minutes. Then we're going to come back and drop in the pasta. Oh, I need to put the bay leaf in. Here is the bay leaf, and I'm going to drop in the lemon slice. And you can use a fresh lemon slice too. A lemon slice in chicken soup, and I think we show those in the beginning of our videos, just adds the nicest touch to chicken soup. It just lifts the flavor and gives it just that little bit of acid that is really nice. This particular set is a matching set, and this is a frying pan that doubles also as a lid. So I'm gonna put the lid on, and we're gonna let this simmer for about 20 minutes and then we will be back. 
While the soup is simmering, we're going to go ahead and get started on our orzo chicken one, one skillet meal. I'm using a 12 inch cast iron skillet, probably my favorite skillet, and I am melting a couple of tablespoons of ghee. Now this is one of the off-grid setups that I would use, at least until I could not get any more um, canisters of butane. So I love this setup. It's in my kitchen, and especially today when it's over 100, it's cool in my kitchen. So that's good. Now here are the four thighs that I had packed away and frozen for a few days. So what the recipe calls for is us, for us to leave the skin on and then to go ahead and fry them and sprinkle them with salt and pepper. Now we're going to fry them until they're golden brown on both sides until they're completely done. And so um, I'm going to stick them in right now. And for those of you who keep track of whether or not I've washed my hands, I can assure you that I've washed my hands. I did put the skin down on these and I'm going to be sprinkling with um, Laurie's season salt. I love Laurie's season salt. And with a little bit of pepper. We will be back in just a few minutes when this chicken is golden brown and completely done. Oh, it's really cooled down out here. It's now down to 99 degrees. <laughs> so at least we're in the shade. So let's take a look at our soup. It's been out here simmering. Is that just the perfect simmer? And look at the lemon right there. So pretty. The veggies are done. Smells great. So now what we're going to do is add the pasta. This is a cup of, this is skinny spaghetti, thin spaghetti that I've just broken in about two inch pieces. You can really use any pasta that you want. It should be a little bit small rather than really fat because this is chicken noodle soup. We want those noodles in there. Chicken spaghetti soup. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm also going to add the chicken so we're going to let the pasta cook and the chicken warm up and then this will be ready to eat. All right, so the chicken is golden brown, a little more than golden brown maybe on the side that's closest to the flame. And it is done. And I'm just going to mop up a little bit of this ghee and grease. I don't want quite so much. So I'm going to add in a half a cup of onions. And I have my best guess of about six ounces of dehydrated mushrooms that I have just rehydrated. I'm going to put them in. And you can certainly use fresh if you have them. I didn't have any, so I'm using what I have in my food storage. Oh my gosh, I wish you were here. It smells delightful. We're going to then add a teaspoon of thyme. and a teaspoon of diced garlic. We'll stir them around. I'm going to sprinkle in a tablespoon of flour and mix it around. Here is three cups of chicken broth. Let this simmer just a little bit and we'll be right back. Time was about 45 minutes. And here is our soup. 
This is a beautiful, rich, thick soup. Here's our lemon. It kind of gave up most of its best parts. But that's what it was in there for. And um, this is a thick noodle soup. None of that thin watery stuff that you get in a can. This is robust, healthy, and wonderful chicken noodle soup. So this is one of our recipes. I took a picture just a minute ago that will be in the booklet. And now we're going to go back in and uh, check on the chicken orzo. Okay, I have added the mustard, which was a teaspoon of brown mustard. And I really like this stone ground with all the seeds in it. So that's what is in there right now. Okay, and so next is the orzo. And if you've never used orzo before, it's really fun. It, it looks just like rice, but it is pasta. And so we're going to be adding two-thirds of a cup of orzo. And we are going to let that simmer until it has absorbed the water. or at least almost, and then we'll place the chicken pieces on the top. We need to add a little bit of sour cream. I have some powdered sour cream that I'm going to be using. I'm just going to sprinkle it on there dry. And then we'll also put in some Parmesan cheese. So we'll let this cook for a bit and then we'll be back. I am sprinkling in now three tablespoons of dried sour cream. If you don't have freeze dried sour cream, use just fresh sour cream. And a fourth of a cup of Parmesan cheese. I'm giving it a sprinkling of parsley flakes. I'm going to stir this in. Oh my goodness. I can smell that cheese and sour cream combination. It is going to be wonderful, wonderful. And then we are going to add calls for fresh spinach. I'm using some of my dehydrated spinach. Spinach is so easy to dehydrate. And this will give it a lovely touch. And we're just going to stir this until it rehydrates a little bit and wilts. Those mushrooms and onions. And now we are placing the chicken thighs on the top. Kind of nestling them in. And I did microwave these just about another 90 seconds to be sure that they were done. One of them looked as if it was bleeding when it was on the towel. So here we are. This is our one pot chicken orzo meal. And it is, I've I took a little taste of the orzo uh, mixture and it is absolutely wonderful. In the booklet, this meal is to be used two times. So what I would do is divide it right in half, wait until this half cools, and then I would just pop it in a freezer container and put it in the freezer for a week or so until we get ready to use it again. Meanwhile, we're going to have this for supper tonight. So let's go check our soup. So here are both of our meals that we did today. Uh, one meal for this, although we will probably get two meals out of this, and you might as well, especially if you add additional ingredients. This one is also a, a double meal pot. And so technically we have three of the 12 meals that are listed in the booklet. I hope you enjoy this booklet. And if you have not yet downloaded it, the link to our bookstore will be below in the description. So we have several more meals to go. All of them will be prepared off grid. And I think that's going to help me as well as I hope that it helps you. So thanks for joining us and we will see you at our next video.